Hi everyone, my name is Yash and I want to share my journey with you of scoring 329 on the GRE out of 340. It isn't the highest score but at the same point in time it is quite a decent one and pretty much any university that you know I want to apply to I can with this particular score. So today I'll be sharing my tips and tricks for your GRE test for absolutely free. Uh, speaking of free by the way I have compiled a whole list of resources on preparation of the GRE exact study material that I used and I'm giving it all away for free. You can get it from the link in the description. Now I basically basically studied for about two months and my exact study plan is available on this channel but for you for your convenience I've actually made two plans one for one month and the second one for two month duration it depends on how much time you have in your hands but I think if you could go for the two months one it is perfect because it basically has enough time you know 60 days is a long time and especially with me personally I was also doing some internships along with the actual test preparation so I used to study in the mornings and the evenings so I think the two month plan just made more sense. Let's talk about the tips and tricks for the test. Let's begin. The first thing that I did was before I began my preparation, I took a diagnostic test. I wanted to see where I currently stand, you know, in terms of the GRE without actually spending a lot of time in its preparation. So no matter where you are, at which stage you are as of now, I would take a full length GRE mock test. You can take one of the power prep ones, ETS power prep. They are extremely, extremely accurate. So if you take one, you will know pretty much exactly where you stand. What I did was I recorded my baseline score that, okay, you know, for verbal, I'm getting let's say 140 and for quant I'm getting let's say 145. AWA I was not great either at the beginning but what it did was it helped me understand my weaker area sort of how much I need to tread from here to getting to my dream score of hopefully 330 or so and Again, that sort of decides how much time you need and how much effort you need to put into it as well. Let's talk about some of the specific tips that I have for you for the quant section first, and then I'll take you through to the verbal section as well. The first thing is to build a plan. I don't care what kind of a plan you follow, but you should know that, okay, I'm spending this much time on each chapter and there are these many chapters. So that's how I'll finish it in one month or two months or three months, whatever your plan is. You should have a deadline. And for me, setting a deadline was important because I would kind of start lazing off if I didn't have one. And that's also why the first thing I did was I went on to the EPS website and I booked my GRE. I said, okay, this is the date I'm going to take my test. I booked it for a Monday, by the way, so that I'll have a nice weekend before that where I can sort of revise everything. But you know, again, I would set a deadline where I sort of have a knife hanging over my head that I need to prepare by the state. So at the same time, you should know, okay, this many hours I'm studying every day. This is my target score. And, you know, according to your deadline, you can work in that case. Second is to focus on concept building first. But I've seen that one of the biggest mistakes for me personally would have been if I just started working towards the GRE like I'm an expert. I didn't know, you know, I was still preparing and I was not great at some of the concepts, some of the questions. And that's why even though I knew like 50-60% of the concepts, I watched the Magush videos first. You can pretty much study any study material, but the Magush videos I would recommend most because they sort of take you from the very basic to the very advanced level. And what I personally like to do is whenever I find a formula, a concept that I feel like I didn't know and I might forget tomorrow and I'll have to watch this video again to revise it, I just like to write it down in my own sort of like a guide, you know, that I built for myself. So my advice would be to keep on building notes during the concept building phase. So you first, let's say if you're starting with geometry, you study the geometry videos and it doesn't have to be Magush. You can use any source, but personally I use Magush, so that's what I'll recommend. And by the way, you can get these videos pretty cheap from the website link I'll share with you for like one third, one fourth of the actual price. But once you have these videos, you start watching them before you actually start doing the geometry questions. Similarly, when I moved to, let's say, data interpretation, I watched the videos first, gained the concept, and then I did the questions. The third one is to solve without a timer first. Look, like I said, I'm no expert. So when I'm starting, what I want to do is I want to take it easy. I want to really understand the question and the way of solving it, essentially. I want to have the perfect accuracy. So I don't want the timer to sort of rush me when I'm trying to do that for the very first time. Once I'm getting used to it, then I'll start using the timer but for the first month I did not use the timer at all. Number four is to look at multiple approaches while solving the question. See the same math question in front of you you can solve it sometimes in two ways. One is you know it's perfectly accurate and you know it's the proper way of solving it you know but it takes a lot of time. The second way is fast it's like a shortcut and for the GRE you need to know those shortcuts as well because time is just so important. So I would always especially in the first month I would spend time on each and every question without worrying about any timer 
and I would understand all the approaches of doing a question so that I could figure out the fastest approach for myself as well. Number five is to find the right community. If you get stuck, you can use a couple of options. Of course, ChatGPT is one option. You upload the question over here, ask it, it might explain it to you. Sometimes other communities like Reddit or Biomgrad discussions I use where I, I would post a question and I would discuss with other people. And sometimes, you know, it helped me make some friends as well who were on the same exact journey essentially. So that's something you can also try. Point number six is to use the right resources. I have seen this happen with a lot of people. If you are studying from a resource, let's say, and you know, there are many coachings within India which have their own study material. And the study material is not of the level of the GRE or it's maybe too high also. Like sometimes it's too tough. You're basically wasting your time because that kind of a question will never be on the test. So always make sure you study really the exact kind of question that you would see on the GRE. Of course, the official guides from EDS are helpful. Then I would study from Manhattan Five Pound Book because these are really close to the actual GRE in my opinion. There's the Princeton 1014 questions. And of course, the Magush ones, the, the package that I told you, which comes at like one fourth the price, you can get it, you know, not only for the videos, but you'll also have questions included in it for free. So that's also something that I use. By the way, most of these study books that I used, you can get for absolutely free. Uh, you get them sent to your email when you sign up on Biomgrad or you can use the Library Genesis website. You can go over there and download the PDF of the book for absolutely free. Otherwise, I've already compiled these resources. So when, you know, you basically get them from the link down there, you will already have them. Number seven is practice, practice, practice. Trust me, your performance really goes up exponentially once you practice. Initially, you won't see a major increase, but all of a sudden you'll see the performance starts getting better. And usually that happened around the last 20 days of my preparation for me uh, in the two month plan. I was in fact able to finish a bit in advance. So usually I would be left with one, two or sometimes even three minutes on the timer. So I could use that time to review some questions which I was not sure about. And many times I would find corrections I could make even before I submitted the test. So always try to leave some time at the end. Point number eight is that there's no negative marking whatsoever. So please don't skip questions. Anytime you want to skip a question, you can do it, but mark whatever you feel may be the right answer and then move on and you can flag that question. You can come back to it at any point. Ninth tip is to do the easier questions first. I cannot tell you so many times people make this mistake on the actual test because it's a completely different experience than, you know, doing it at home. So sometimes we go over there and we get stuck, you know, no, how do I actually leave this question? I don't want to get a bad score. I don't want to leave this question. I will do this. And then you end up spending four minutes on that question when you don't have those four minutes. So instead, what you want to do is you want to skip it. Do the easier questions first, because so many times I've seen this. Sometimes the questions at the end were very easy, but the ones in the middle were difficult and people get stuck in the middle. And that might lower our score a lot because each and every question is worth the same amount of points. So you don't want to miss any question. Finally, point 10 for me was to avoid offline coachings altogether because I feel like just the to and fro and all of that as of today, it's just not worth it. I feel like I did my whole preparation with this laptop that's in front of me right now. Why not you? Anyone can do it. If I can score 329 and I feel like I know a lot of people can do that as well with this, with this exact same plan. I don't think regimen is the problem. If you can sit down every day for two, three hours, you know, half in the morning, half of the night, you can do this. You can crack this. My score on the quantitative section by the way was 168 so it was not the worst score although i wish i didn't miss out on those two points but it was very awesome. the score on the verbal section was 161 so again I, I think i did okay over there i could have done better but for the verbal section i have some tips for you as well the first major tip is to not look at the options because the options are just put in such a way that they almost start confusing so i would literally put my hand on the screen in front of the options i don't want to see them and i would put my own fill in and then you know Whatever my fill-in is, I would find a synonym of that in the options. That is the right strategy and I can assure you of that given that I've been doing this for some time now. If you're doing that already just with incorporating the strategy, you will all of a sudden see a dramatic increase in your score usually. And for reading comprehension also, my strategy is never to read the whole reading passage early on. I want to read it, solve the question subsequently and then come back, read a little bit more, solve the next question, so on and so forth. Doing this is the best way to solve the test because usually you see that the question come in the order of the passage and not just random. So there's a very specific order to it and that's what you want to retain as well. One more tip I have for you is to understand and it's so difficult to accept this but understand that 
you will not know all the words on the test i learned like 4000 words for the gre and even then i can tell you at the end there was this one question i still remember just one single blank i had to fill to get that one right but i didn't know the meaning of the words and i still feel that i i got it wrong that's where i lost some points as well so you don't want to lose points over the words but please understand no matter how many words you learn there's going to be that one or two words that you know you just won't know the meaning of but that's also where you want to bring in the root words concept many times i'll tell you what i didn't even know the meaning to the word but i got the answer right why because i followed root words for instance the root equi usually means something that is going to be equal in quantities to each other or some with respect to anything else so examples would be equivalent equidistant equilibrium equimolar all of these basically mean similar things and just because of the root you can actually make sense out of it so try to find the roots within the words and sometimes it just makes sense hey you know what this word must mean something like that even though i don't know what equi molar is but it must be something about you know equal number of moles or something like that my fourth tip for you is to maintain a personal dictionary when i did that during my whole preparation remember for the quant section i told you to maintain like notes of formulas and important concepts similarly at the same time i was producing a dictionary of words for the gre my own dictionary and i personally wrote all these 3 4000 words because i was solving all these questions and i came across these words every time i would see a word you know i don't know the meaning of because this is a gre question i say hey i don't know the meaning of this let me write this word down because this is a gre question i might actually see this word on the gre you know so i'm practicing with gre material why not actually capitalize on it now my by the way my dictionary is available to you on newstudymaterial.com for a very small price if you want you guys can get it for over there but the point is then that you can build your own one as well if you want if you have the time for it if you could put in some effort the key is to write the word a meaning and then a sample sentence so that you understand the usage of it as well so tomorrow you can use it in the aw as well if you want speaking of that my aw score was 4.5 which i mean i wished i would get a 5 but it was still okay at the end and then my final point for you point number 5 is to not reread the passage a lot of people keep on reading the passage when they don't understand you know uh, in the reading comprehension like don't reread it you don't need to memorize it or understand it perfectly remember your goal is to look at the passage answer the question that's it even if you forget this passage the moment you walk out of the test room it is fine we don't care it is only there for the answer to the question that's it so don't reread don't try to memorize it it's okay if you don't understand some part final tip for you guys before you go is the mock test try to take 6 to 8 mock tests before your actual test uh, my key ones would be of course the two eps power prep ones which come in for absolutely free so i would keep one for the last you know for the very end basically because you know it doesn't give you feedback but it gives you a very genuine score like you know this is what you're going to score on this gi so if you take the power prep and next day you go for the test you're probably getting the same score then the princeton four tests that's an amazing material uh, you can get four tests from princeton and one of them is by the way even free if you sign up with them and then a kaplan five tests you have so you can use those as well and again one of them you can get free usually these are accounts so they either come with the books or they're chargeable again uh, i've linked the website over here through which you can get it at like 1/4 the price just in case you're looking for one of these study materials as well but this is probably everything you need to score a 329 on the GRE with that said i do a lot more of this and of course you know not only GRE TOEFL plans i built for you IELTS and you know this exact plan basically this exact strategy that i'm sharing with you over here got me into one of the best schools in the US University of Southern California so i'm with you like a brother anytime you have any questions you can reach out my uh, whatsapp numbers below you will also find uh, my instagram below and uh, yeah you know thank you so much for watching this video i hope to see you in the next one goodbye and take care until next time